What is up, everybody? Alex from WMD here, back at you again. And this time we're going to be talking about pitch tracking in relation to filters. So we're going to be using the new WMD Carbon as well as the Javelin. Um, those, that's going to be our voice. We're going to use the PDO through the Carbon filter, use the Javelin as an envelope. So why do you need pitch tracking on a filter? So a filter takes the incoming sound of an oscillator, or any sound source really, and it filters out harmonics. So a lot of times in a basic subtractive voice, what you're going to be using is a low pass filter, similar to like on a Moog or any other sort of subtractive synth. A lot of times you're going to be using a low pass filter and an envelope. And then sometimes you'll see a knob that's called key tracking um, or just filter tracking, just tracking in general. And what this means is will the filter move with your keyboard? So we know that you can modulate the filters cutoff with an envelope, but why would you wanna do it with the keyboard? Well, there's a couple cool reasons. Number one, you just wanna make sure that if you go up into a higher range and you're using a low pass filter, that you aren't going to be exceeding that um, cutoff frequency with the fundamental that you're actually playing, right? So the higher you get, if your filter just stays static and is just moving with the modulation of the envelope, then it's not really going to allow the frequencies through as you go higher up on the keyboard or higher up in the sequence. So like as far as pitch goes, higher up in pitch. So we can use key tracking to always have this... Um, these two in relation to each other. A lot of synths you will see a knob and a lot of modules you won't. So we'll talk about what that means, attenuation of that key tracking signal and why you might want to do that. And then we'll just turn resonance all the way up, put it into self oscillation and use it kind of as its own voice or its own oscillator. We'll demo that, why you might want to use that. We'll make some cool like 808 sounds and then we'll experiment with FM. So let's just dive into it. All right, so first things first, I'm just going to take the saw wave out of my PDO. I'm going to run it through the input on my carbon, and we're going to run the output of carbon. We'll just go straight into the mixer here. And we're going to take the envelope out of Javelin. We're going to run that into the FM input on carbon so we can modulate the cutoff just with an envelope. And actually, out of the filter, instead of going straight to the mixer, we're going to go into the carbon first or javelin first, excuse me, get my words jumbled. So get some more cables over here, I'm trying to find some short ones. All right, so now we'll just run some gates out of Metron. I'm just gonna go channel 13 into the gate input of javelin. We'll start the clock and we'll run some gates. All right, so now we'll just take our Volterra. We'll just run into the Volt Per Octave on the PDO here. And we'll change up our voltage range. We'll make it a wide range. We'll go from zero to four volts. So we'll have a four volt range. And we'll do some notes in here. Then we'll just record. Here we go. So I'm going to break up my level here a little bit. So now you can hear that while we're doing this, we have the envelopes, uh, envelope output modulating the filter cutoff. And then when we get to those higher notes, we're not quite hearing. Those get a little bit quieter, right? They sound a little bit quieter, especially these really high ones. And they're just kind of rounded off where we get a little bit of edge on that low end. So this is where key tracking in the classic sense comes from, right? So as we're going through, we can't quite hear those notes. We want it to open while our pitch goes up. So instead of using this cable for pitch, I'm going to use this handy Y cable here. And I'm just going to go out of Volterra, run it into the Volt Per Octave, and then into the Volt Per Octave on my Carbon. 
So now you can hear that the filter is opening higher as the notes get higher. So when you're using like a nice small range like this, that kind of helps out. It kind of just brings it to life a little bit more and just kind of uh, adds a little bit of dynamics to the sound. So what if we don't want so much, right? So like I said earlier, a lot of synths have a key tracking knob allowing you to say how much key tracking you want. Well, in a 4HP filter, there isn't really room for an attenuator over the volt per octave, but luckily this is modular. So what we're gonna do is just run through this attenuator on my uh, 410 here, or a 10, however you wanna call it. And I'm gonna run that into the volt per octave. Bring up my fader again so we can hear it. So now this is zero uh, key tracking. So you can hear it's real muffled, especially in the high zones. Right? And now we can just add a little bit. So this is the exact same thing that you would be doing on a subtractive synth that has a key tracking knob. You're just deciding how much the sequence is going to affect the filter. This is kind of nice to have on an attenuator um, separately so you can actually add it if you want it and take it away if you don't. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is show off the voice capabilities. So we're just going to take out the PDO here. And what we're gonna do is just turn resonance all the way up. We're gonna put FM in the middle here and we're just gonna listen to what we got. All right, so I have, now I need to take my volt per octave and I need to run it out of my Volterra. We're gonna take out the FM for now. Now that's not in tune with what we were hearing earlier, obviously, because I didn't tune it beforehand and I was messing with the knobs. So what we're gonna do is just clear out our sequence and then we'll just make a new one that's a little bit more easy to hear what's going on. Oops, I just turned that frequency knob again. So now we've got this nice little tunable drum sound, right? So that's pretty cool. So that's nice if you need like an 808 kind of sound, right? So I'm just gonna add a couple more things. I'm gonna add a clap here. some chimera I think I think this might sound nice simulate some hi-hat action so I'm just gonna go out of number three into my canera chimera and we'll do some like ratchety kind of stuff Oop, wrong one go to four We'll do this four bar pattern. We'll put a burst at the end here. All right, so the next thing I might do just to like reinforce this a little bit is the gate pattern that we're using, right? So this is number 13. I'm gonna have this trigger both my javelin, so my envelope, as well as my crater kick drum. And we all know, yeah, crater can 
be uh, sequenced one volt per octave as well. So if you want to tune that and, and run it with this sequence, you can. But what we're going to do is just leave it static and tune it a little bit and just add a little bit of beef to that beat. Let's tune it. There we go. Sounds nice. All right, one, why not? Just one more thing. Let's add some crucible cymbal in here on the quarter notes. I know I'm getting away from the demo, but this just sounds dope, right? I'm just having a good time. So we go to five. One really cool trick is if you hold this encoder down while you press steps, it'll apply that step to every page. So that's a real quick way to enter steps. All right, so there we go. So now I've got my attack from my crater and I've got this real cool sine wave um, sound coming just from the carbon being um, gated basically by the javelin. So that's creating our like 808 kind of sound for the uh, tuned bass drum. Now I'll check it out when I turn on this wave folder. So instead of using the low pass two pull out, we're gonna use the four pull out and we're gonna turn on this wave folder. Uh. <laughs> oh, that sounds good, man. I love that. Just adds a little bit of grit, right? Turn that off. Turn up this range on Javelin. Ooh, yeah. We can go back to short. Dang, that just sounds... I love that. All right, so last thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna add some FM. So I'm gonna switch my PDO from using the saw wave. I'm gonna turn it over to use the sine wave. We're gonna take the output of that and we're gonna run it into the FM input. And now we can turn up this FM knob. It kind of sounds crazy, right? Well, let's see what happens when we sync or when we sequence both of our oscillators, our filter as well as our um, FM modulator oscillator with the same uh, full octave. Now we'll just uh, mess around with the pitch over here. <laughs> so that's pretty cool to use kind of as a fill thing, right? Just turn up that FM amount. And that's, you know, you getting back to the center of a knob is also is always just a little bit cumbersome. So just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm gonna use the A10 again. So I'm gonna come out of this channel, I'm gonna run into the FM input, and then I'm gonna turn the FM all the way up, but just use this fader down here as that FM amount. And then I can just bring it all the way down to the bottom of the fader and just slap it down and then we're good to go. So I can set my max amount with this knob, right? And then just use the fader to turn it on and off.
<laughs> All right, let's hear it with that uh, wave folder on. This will be the last thing we do. That's it. I hope it gives you some ideas on how to use pitch tracking with filters in your own rig. The WMD Carbon and Javelin are both available now, so please check those out at wmdevices.com. As always, please like and subscribe, and we will see you all next time. Peace.